let's say you don't have an irrigation plan. It's very common for design build firms to not provide you with an irrigation plan because they're going to design it in the field when they're out there doing the construction. So one contractor will come up with his idea of a good irrigation design and another contractor will come up with their idea of an irrigation design. The problem in that approach is, is that irrigation designs can vary wildly in cost. So somebody who's trying to sell you the job may come in with a cheaper landscape or irrigation design and another guy who only cares about doing it right will have a much more um, a higher quality and more intricate design. But it could literally double the cost on a lot of projects for the irrigation design alone. And all you're going to know is that this guy bid this number for irrigation and this one bid this price, but you're not really going to understand why because there's nothing quantifiable. It's, uh, it's interesting you say that. We uh, had a lot of trouble actually with the design uh, of our irrigation in the last project that we did. We found that we ended up with uh, different patches on the lawn. Some areas were getting watered thoroughly and other areas were not getting watered at all. Very common problem. Um, probably the biggest reason for that, and now I'm a contractor, I'm licensed in California as well as a landscape architect. With my contractor's license, there was no testing about irrigation design on the test. It's not something that a contractor has to know. And unfortunately, because it's not required, most of them haven't taken classes mm -hmm. to understand the proper design and head layout um, and precipitation rates and things like that. The better contractors may have taken a class on the side to understand it better, but unfortunately, that's more the exception than the rule. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is because we replace a lot of older systems, and it's rare that we find one that the client says they're happy with, and then when we check it, it's actually functioning well. So um, there is a lot of this that the client presumes the contractor understands how to do that, but then it doesn't function the way it should. One of the biggest reasons to have an irrigation plan is because the, the irrigation plan should reflect what the plant design is. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest discrepancy here that you'll find between a landscape architect designing it in conjunction with the plant design and a contractor who lays it out in the field. He's laying it out in the field when there's nothing but dirt there. Doesn't right. take the planting into account, puts heads along a fence line, then turns around and puts plants right in front of the heads and over time or maybe immediately those plants block his spirit, his irrigation design. Right. Okay. Very that, common. That, that's exactly what happened to us actually. We right. had a, a bunch of the, uh, the water heads just being blocked by a plant as they came through. So then what happens is you get very wet spots and you get very dry spots right. and certain plants will actually just die because they no longer have water to them and others may have issues because they're standing in water. So real important to coordinate the two and the irony is is that irrigation design for a full plan may be hundreds of dollars but the, the what the client ends up paying for is a flawed product from the beginning and even the, the other part is is that it wouldn't have cost them necessarily any more to have had the design done right the construction was probably a similar price point, mm. but because it doesn't work right, the value is all lost. So that's the real reason to coordinate the two. The other part is, is how does a contractor fairly price something that doesn't exist yet? That's one of the biggest reasons I have a problem with that approach is that the, clients, the contractor is giving you a price for this irrigation system it doesn't exist. How does he fairly price something that he can't yeah. quantify yet? And that's why it's not, there's got to be a buffer in there for him, but that's not fair to you. So that's another reason to have the plans done in advance is so that you can fairly quantify it, but also so that contractors can give you apples to apples bids. Mm -hmm. And so whether it's the irrigation system or the plant design or the hardscape or whatever piece of the plan it is, it's the same issue all the way through. Mm -hmm. Can't quantify it unless it's on paper and each person could do something different which gives it a different price point which means you can't truly compare their pricing at all. Mm -hmm. And this is the big one. The plans are the accountability. When the construction starts, and this is the whole reason for this video, 
This is a way for you to check whether they are following plans that are of a specification that's of a high standard. The inspection part of this video allows you to understand what it should look like and what it should be and then check and make sure it's being done that way. Mm. But see, if there are no plans, there is no accountability. So now the contractor just has to say, that's the way we always do it. Right. Mm. And you have to live with that because you have nothing saying otherwise. So the plans are the whole basis for the accountability to make sure you're being treated fairly and the work is being done correctly.